my name is Tanam Shaw and I'm from UNSW. Today I'm working through some of the Math 101 calculus problems uh, from the chapter on the applications of calculus. So this question uh, is giving us a quartic function here and is asking us to find the values of x when that function is increasing and decreasing and find the values of x uh, when the function is concave up and concave down. We'll put it all together and uh, we might as well draw a sketch of the function as well. So first of all, if we want to uh, find when it's increasing and decreasing, what we are trying to do is solve y dash greater than zero. And for decreasing, we're trying to solve y dash is less than zero. So when is the slope of the tangent positive? When is the slope of the tangent negative there? So if my function y is this quartic, first of all, let's differentiate it. So y dash will be 12x cubed plus 48x squared plus 48x and this constant 3 differentiates to 0 and we can factorise this uh, certainly a 12x can come out so we'll be left with x squared plus 4x plus 4 and then that further factorises to 12x outside of x plus 2 all squared now, if we want to solve this being greater than zero or less than zero, then we're going to need a little sketch of that graph. So here's a little sketch. Uh, it's got a double root at minus two and a single root at zero. It's a cubic, it's positive x cubed. So it's going to start up here and come down like this. So, just make that a bigger blob. So this is y dash. So when is y dash greater than zero? Well, y dash is greater than zero for all these x values here. So that's for x greater than zero. And when is y dash decreasing? y dash is decreasing for these values here. Well, not at minus 2, it's stationary at minus 2. So it's decreasing on that interval there. So now we can conclude. So for part A, so it's increasing for x greater than 0, but we can write that as x in this set from 0 to infinity. Uh, that's the orange section. And it's decreasing for, well, for x less than 0, but not including minus 2. But we can write that as saying for x in the set from minus infinity up to minus 2, together with minus 2 um, up to 0. So that is this green section here. That's where the function is decreasing. Now while we're talking about the first derivative, uh, let's just make a note that there's stationary points at x equals minus 2 and x equals 0 because that's where y dash is 0. So um, and we'll try and put that together on a sketch there, and then we'll talk about concavity. So note, this is not part of the question, but we might as well talk about it. Um, stationary points occur um, at, well at two points, at x equals minus 2 and at x equals 0, and that's because y dash is 0 here. Now what's happening at minus 2? Well, the gradients uh, y dash is negative on uh, either side of minus 2. So it's got a negative y dash value here and a negative y dash value there. So that means at minus 2, its gradient looks like uh, negative and then it's flat and then it's negative. So that's one of these horizontal points of inflection. So at x equals minus 2, um, it's going to be a horizontal point of inflection and that's because either side of minus 2 the gradient is negative 
At x equals 0, on the left, the gradient's negative, and on the right, the gradient's positive. So on the left, the gradient's negative, and then on the right, it's positive. So this is going to be a local minimum here. Now, we can plug those into the y value to get our x coordinate. Zeros are easy to plug in. When x is 0, y is just 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 3. That's fine. Minus 2 is not so easy, uh, but I calculated it before. Minus, when x equals minus 2, this y value is 19 here. So this is also telling us that we've got stationary points when y dash is 0, and looking at what the sine of y dash is, either side of those, will tell us what type of stationary point we have. So if we wanted to put them on a graph, then at minus 2, comma 19, we have a horizontal point of inflection, and at 0, comma 3, we have a local minimum. So it's got a negative gradient, and it's flat, still got a negative gradient, and now it's coming down here, and it's a local minimum at 3 here. Okay, so this is what y dash is telling us. Um, and this, is, this makes sense in terms of the increasing and decreasing uh, answers that we got. It's increasing from 0 to infinity, and it's decreasing for x less than 0 here, except at this point where it's stationary, and that's that horizontal point of inflection. Okay, so let's keep going and answering answer parts C and D. I really want a blue pen. Okay, so concave up and concave down. The curve is going to be concave up when its second derivative is greater than zero, and concave down when its second derivative is less than zero. So we want to solve this. Now we have our first derivative here, so we can find our second derivative. So 12x cubed differentiates to 36x squared. 48x squared differentiates to 96x, and 48x differentiates to 48. So we can find y double dash here, and we can factorise that. I suspect 12 comes out here, and we're left with a 3x squared plus 12 eighths are 96, and 12 fours are 48. So y double dash is this quadratic, and that further factorizes, and I need to do an extra step in here. So that's a 3x squared plus 6x plus 2x plus 4. If I'm splitting the middle term, two numbers that multiply to 12 and add to 8 are 6 and 2. And so then I can see that factorizes into 3x outside of x plus 2 plus a 2x plus a 4. So this is the factorization of y double dash. Now again, if we want to solve when it's concave up and concave down, we're trying to solve this is greater than 0 and less than 0. That's going to require a little sketch of y double dash. So let's do a little sketch of y double dash here. That's just a parabola. And again, I need... The intercepts are negative, so I might as well put them over here. So we've got minus 2 and minus 2 thirds are the x-intercepts of this parabola. So this is a graph of y double dash against x here. Okay, now two more coloured pens. I think I can go with these two. So concave up y double dash is greater than 0. Well, I can see from the graph here y double dash is greater than 0 uh, for x bigger than minus 2 thirds and less than minus 2. And it's concave down uh, in here when y double dash is less than 0 in that section over there. So just writing our answer now. So for part C, it's concave up 
for, well, this pink section here, so that's for x from minus infinity up to minus 2, together with from 2 thirds, don't need all of that, up to infinity. So that's the concave up section, this pink section here. And the answer to part D is that it's concave down for this section when y double dash is negative. So that's x is in this interval from minus 2 thirds up, minus 2, sorry, up to minus 2 thirds. So that's when it's concave down. Okay, so uh, what's happening here? Let's see what's happening on our graph. Uh, it's concave up from minus infinity up to minus 2. That makes sense. This is a concave up section here. Now, it's uh, also concave up from, from 2 thirds, not 2 thirds, minus 2 thirds up to infinity. So there's some point here, minus 2 thirds, where it starts being concave up. So maybe it's somewhere in here. At minus 2 thirds, the curve is concave up from that point onwards. So this is what we would call uh, a point of inflection. So minus 2 thirds, I'd have to work out the y value there. That's a point of inflection. It's changing to concave up there. And then we have it's concave down in this section from minus 2 to minus 2 thirds. So concave down in this section here. Uh, and just to complete it, I need a calculator to work out what this value is. So this happens to be 9 and 14 20 sevenths. Okay, so that's what we would call the point of inflection there. Okay, so we've answered the question. Uh, we've said when the curve, when this quartic is increasing and when it's decreasing, and we've said when it's concave up and when it's concave down. But even further, we've drawn a sketch of that function and we can see when it's decreasing, we can see when it's increasing, we can see when it's concave up here and concave up here, and we can see when it's concave down in this section there. So that's question two, part three.